in heaven and you know what we have a hard time believing that we have a hell of a hard time believing that because we live in this meat suit inside this this k these these cells that they've given us as we stare at the scrying mirrors the computers or the television and not doing other things not going out and living the world and seeing God's amazing creation interacting with each other they don't want just to interact that's why they're making you wear the mask it's more than just a mockery it's more than just a shaming ritual this is to keep you and I and all the rest of us from talking about how evil this place is and how foul it is is this Zio fascist demonic takeover of the world it happens right before our eyes and what does Jesus say about who to fear do you fear the one that kills the body or the one that kills the body and the soul well he was saying specifically to his people at this time and I think it still applies today that if you don't accept him, there's this thing called the lake of fire. I don't know how he reconciles everything. He knows what's best. Maybe it really does come down to whether, you know, what is it that you love more? This or God? His creation, who he is. This world, the games that we play, the games that we pretend to have at the expense of others and we think oh because they're well willed they they always hear the same thing everyone says the same thing oh I love God I love God it's just part of life this is what you do you're supposed to get as much as you can out of this life when he came specifically to these apostles he is making it real clear to them what their mission is. Their life is of no value outside of serving him. Now think about that. Really think about that. Because if you think that you're just chasing your goods and your items and having a house and maybe finding the person you want to hump all the time is the success of this life, you are so far from the reality, it's pathetic. The ultimate goal in this whole life is to have abiding faith in who? Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ, and what he said and did. That's it. And you're going to go through a landmine field of deceptions, lies. You're going to have to carry your cross. If you want the greatest reward that there is was to be in the presence of God, then you're going to have to pay the price. Oh, we won't want to do that. We don't think that's fair, but we'll pay the price when it comes to all these other things. How about is it, you know, these these silver, it was a, I'm finding fascinating watching this Wall Street silver and this new movement and, and uh, exposing how corrupt the banking system is and how they're short selling all this stuff and, and all these, you know, there's not enough silver out there to cover what they actually owe and all that. Just to show the corruption I don't think it's a wonderful move. I don't think it's a wise move. And I think everybody should get some silver and some gold. Oh, but I don't think it's the f- complete answer, i tell you that much. I think the only answer is Jesus. And whatever comes our way is whatever comes our way. You say, Mike, that's real easy for you. But if you knew my circumstances, honestly, I don't think there's too many men that could... Pre- handle what I go through on a daily basis at my age and I just give up now God gave me my son and I'm certainly thinking about him of late I'm trying to give him some better future even though I have no money I'm trying to make a future for him out of as little as possible so I am you know here and there buying some silver not like everyone else is doing running out there and running every store that there is and getting you know their 10 ounces of silver here and there and everywhere nope but a couple coins I got my son you know like four or five overall and you know take them there 
and show them the, the value and, the, the, and, and instill you know the, a notion of saving and I think that silver coins are one of the best ways to, to instill saving for your children I really do believe that and at some point that's it will be worth something more even though everything else will go up along with it but at least if you know even though it goes up say 70 hundred bucks while everything else is going up you know that's going to still triple its value or double yeah double or triple its value and I might be able to buy some bread but why what is our purpose in this world is it simply just to exist you know people think we're not all enslaved you're out of your freaking mind if you don't think you live in a prison you're out of your freaking cotton picking mind All right, back to this whole thing. So his this this last of his apostles, his disciples, who had co was commissioned to go throughout, and I'm telling you, it was a hell of a thing. You think it's tough? But listen, I was a Mormon missionary, and even with the organization and all that, it was still tough for young men to just get out there. Uh, on their own and I, I you know there are some very disciplined guys I've met, met some amazingly disciplined guys and some of the biggest jerks you'll ever meet in your life but that's not either there neither here or there about the jerk part the biggest thing is is that to get up every day go and knock on a hundred of the doors and being rejected by and you know it's a numbers game and depending what part of the world you are you can knock on thousands and thousands of before you even get somebody to let you in to sell your bogus cult. Now imagine what it must have been like for these apostles and the disciples who not only had to face constant rejection but the violence imprisonment torture mocking and I, I with the hordes of the different factions in Jerusalem at that time you and the fact that someone with the arrogance the the the, the uh, so blasphemous to say to the rest of the of uh, this the people of Israel who have for hundreds of years playing these traditions putting the the Levites and the priestcraft in such a high level and politicians and their leaders and get giving there are so much of their their hard earnings to the king there was kings back then in the Judea outside of the Pontifus Maximus Caesar the king of kings in this manly world the king of kings in the flesh certainly you must understand that this must be to be a slave and you, th you think well, well it's not the same this time no it's not well, they're going to change it again they're going to play games with us, make money out of it, kill a bunch of us, have wars. That's what they're going to do. They're bringing everything down and also surrounding us with their full spectrum dominance and their uh, in world wide web and their internet. So not only you be in a cage, but now they'll pay attention to everything that you do. And if you, it's, it's time for you to go in their minds, it's time for you to go. Does it sound similar? We cross over, and I bet you the same thing was going on back then in their own way. Whether they had the technology or not, I don't know. You don't know. One thing I do know is it must have been a nightmare living in Judea. The thought police must have been terrible. I mean, the fact that you couldn't even 
do anything and everybody caught you do anything on the Sabbath, oh, you could be tortured. You could be fined in prison for life. Gotta do the same thing here with the mask and the vaccines and all that other stuff. Same old shit. So what are you going to do? <clears throat> what are we going to do? What do we do as lights in this world? Or believers and followers of Jesus? Do we not? Do we stop sharing this truth? I think more than ever, people need to know the truth about Jesus, that he showed up, he fulfilled all things, you put all your faith in him, not in this world. You start learning from his teachings, what he says, you've been given the book. Even if you did give the book, you've known, you should have known if you have a conscience and you, when you were in organized religion, all the things that you did, you shouldn't have done. And if you don't, let me remind you, you did a lot of things you shouldn't have done. And you wasted your time and your talents. The talents that God gave you to teach people to come join this cult or that cult. Or to say that Jesus comes back in the future and making a mockery of them. That's what you've done. What's different from you than these slothful uh, <clears throat> servants with their talents the Lord gave them? Not much. And you know what? I'm not trying to preach you and make you feel... Well, yes, I am trying to preach you right now. I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. You know, the fact of the matter is this. If we say that we are believers in Jesus... Yet we don't believe what he says. Don't you realize how the, what a hypocrites we are? And how no one's going to take us seriously? And that for the past hundred or how many years, they've taken this book, they've given it the truth to uh, those in charge, you know, and, and even then when the, it was revealed to us and everyone was allowed to read it, and it's been 500 years, they made it so, so obscure, so meaningless, so of the past, so much of a religion than the truth when this book has everything that's anti-religion in it there's only one apostle there's only one excuse me there's only one high priest there's only one God in this whole book I'm sorry to say there's no trinity and all that other nonsense it's Jesus, Yeshua the Messiah, it's Jesus Christ. You're not going to like that, what I said. But you know what? We get done reading it. That's exactly what it says. And you need to stop this whole Trinity stuff. You need to stop dividing with people. You need to stop fighting with people. Because the division comes down to a very simple thing. Do you believe what Jesus said and did? Did he fulfill all things or did he not? Did he not uh, come back for his bride? What he promised in that generation, like he said in chapter 24, the chapter prior to this, or not. If he did, and if you believe that, then, you know, you have to make your stance. And you're going to go against the whole damn world and 99.999% of all those who call themselves Christians. And you're going to be mocked. You're going to be scourged. And if someone's going to ask you, you know, what is it? How much, how much do you love God? And you see, it's very difficult for us to love God. I think God had to put me in such a position to do what I'm doing. Or else I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't be doing this. He used to have to teach me. Chasing me, teach me the truth about who he is. And not to be afraid to say it. I can't tell you something. The rest of the world don't want anything to do with me, whether it's the internet or outside of it. The foundation of all your lies, your house of cards that you live under in this world is the lie that Jesus is coming back in the future and the Messiah is coming back in the future and the world's going to end. They want you to believe that so you don't stand up for yourself and your children your neighbors. 
You want to know who they are? There are today Sadducees and Pharisees and scribes and and money changers and publicans. Yeah, I think you know who they are. They're the predatory class of our generation. The same people who think they're above you simply because they have bigger sticks than you. Didn't First thing and foremost is how they control your mind. Let's go. And the Lord answered to the slothful servant, "Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou know knowest that I reap where I sowest not." That's what she said. Didn't he say that once again? He would cover all the cities of Israel when he come back, and gather where I have not str- uh, strawed. Thou ought to therefore have put my money to the changers, the exchangers. And uh, then at my coming, I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he that shall have abundance... And he shall have abundance, but from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, which he just got through saying in all these previous chapters leading up to this, that would happen in their generation, damn it, with his, it, 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 the Son of Man shall come in his glory, or glory of God, there says glory of the Father, and glory of God, and Son of Man, it's all the same dude, and with his angels, with him, and she, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And we know at that point, that he was sitting on the point of his, the throne of his glory as it was prepared. He was spent all that time preparing this amazing place for them called New Jerusalem. And this is how important this was that these servants served the Lord. It wasn't simply just to, you know, make themselves look greater and better, but it was to serve them, and the reward would be in where? Not here and on earth. But a new Jerusalem. And f- before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate them one from another. As a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. And then shall the king say unto them in his right hand. Come. Ye blessed are my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I am, this is very interesting. How what does he mean by the from the foundation of the world? Was it you know those forty years from his death in New Jerusalem? He's doing the finishing touches. What kind of place is this to take from the foundation of this world to be prepared? Must be one heck of a place, especially if God's at the center of it all. And for I was unhungered, and ye gave me meat. And I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in, of course. And he says, naked, and ye clothed me. And I was sick, and ye visited me. And I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungered, and fed thee, and thirsty, and Gave thee drink. When saw we the stranger and took uh, the end, or naked and clothed thee? And when uh, saw we the, the sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Insomuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, Ye have done it unto me. He's talking about his disciples. Talking about his apostles. 
talking about what they were doing. You know, let's work together on this. We got a big mission. We need to help each other out in our temporal needs here so we can get the truth out to as many people as possible. Because our Lord's coming back and there's and we won't we won't cover all of the cities of Jerusalem when he comes back. And some of us will still be standing. <clears throat> Even got a little jealous. Who's gonna be the one standing, not understanding? It's all God's will and his time. And this is about his glory. And I'm sure that whatever side of the, this veil that we live, whether in the spiritual realm or in this temporal realm, when it happened, it must have been an amazing experience for, for all. And I have a good feeling that those on the other side don't have the same kind of miserable experience, the same kind of miserable experiences we have here. I was a stranger and you took me uh, uh, not in naked and you clothed me not in sick and in prison and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee at hunger and a thirsty and a stranger and naked and sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them saying, Verily I say unto you, insomuch as you <clears throat> have not to one of the least to not uh, okay and if in as much as ye did it not to one of the least of these ye did it not to me these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into eternal life and I will leave it at that so that's the deal man this is what they had the experience. And he's saying, listen, don't screw up this don't, and, and have faith. I'm going to give you the, uh, the power and ability to, to, to get through what you got to get through. But you've got to go and you got to talk to these people. And I think it was brilliant. Because the time they got done, and each one of them got done, or wherever they were supposed to be at, they all had a certain understanding on the other side, the, on the side of the veil. The understanding what these people are really going through and how bad the situation is. And I imagine that it also granted them a lot easier to have mercy on them. We all need to have mercy on each other. Because we're all stupid at this point. Those that call themselves the leaders, dumb as fuck. And those that aren't, those who have been, those of us who received a, a slave's education are just as damn dumb. The dumb leading the dumb. Dumb and dumber. The blind leading the blind. And why we should start by first getting honest about what Jesus had to say so we can get uh, get all those clowns out there those performers those actors those hypocrites they're calling themselves pastors and priests and ministers and popes and whatever uh, you expose them for what they're saying when they act like they know what they're talking about when they mention the Bible and Jesus and act as if they're superior than us and that we should just show up on a Sunday and watch them as they perform their rituals to bedazzle us to blind us 